Now, insurers have struggled to keep up with claims as the coronavirus crisis upends every aspect of our lives. German insurer, reinsurer Munich Re, has withdrawn its guidance for 2020. It's the latest sign of the toll that the pandemic is taking on European insurers, even really despite the um, uh, impressive job that Germany itself has done in dealing with um, this pandemic. We are going to talk to right now the chief financial officer at Munich Re to try and get a little bit more detail. Christoph Eureka joins us from Munich. Christoph, thanks so much for your time this morning. Um, you've, you've scrapped your guidance, but can I ask if you still uh, at least expect to post a net profit for 2020? Well, if we look at our Q2 figure, uh, I can only say we have a very pleasing Q2 result, despite the challenging environment we are in. We posted 1.5 billion COVID-related claims in the first half of the year, um, and, and, and this is significant. And, and given that, we are very happy that in Q2 um, we have a half-year result of 800 million euros still, so uh, a very positive result despite um, our duty to cover all these claims. And, 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 and this is where we currently stand. And uh, we, we did, just didn't give an outlook because, you know, um, as much as we are in Germany benefiting from the situation that, that currently um, the virus uh, is, is not spreading around that much anymore, I can only remind you that on a global level, we are still in the midst of the first wave. Uh, cases are still going up. And, and we are a global firm. We are a global company. So for us, Germany is one market, but there are many others. And so we continue to be very cautious. Christoph, thanks so much. It's Amory Hordern in London. I just have to follow up a little bit there. Matt made a really good point. Yes, you withdrew your guidance, but will we see a profit for the year, a net profit? Can you, can you confirm that? Well, we started with a profit already after the first half of the year. And, and not giving a guidance just means we don't talk about it. The uncertainties are just big, and, 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 and therefore um, uh, we, we, we don't talk uh, about the year end. Now, but as I said before, we have a very pleasing result after the first uh, half of the year. We have a lot of support from the first half year, and, and, and we are, as always, uh, very prudent in the way we set up our reserves for the claims we have already. So in, in that sense, I'm, 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 I'm fairly optimistic, as much as you can be in a difficult environment like where we're currently in. All right, so you had, I think you said, one and a half billion in corona claims, uh, corona-related claims in the second quarter, Christoph. Is that right? And does that seem like the peak to you, or do you expect corona claims then to continue to rise in Q3? Well, the 1.5 billion, uh, thank you for the question, the 1.5 billion is a half-year figure, um, so the first six months covered by that. And um, so this, this figure pretty much covers everything which happened until uh, end of June. Um, who are we to really know how the, uh, you know, the corona pandemic is, is going to continue? We don't know. And therefore, I, I, just, I can't give you the answer because I don't know if there will be a second wave in the countries where we are currently having a better environment or if the acceleration we see in some markets, the acceleration of infections in, in some markets, if this is going to continue or if eventually, and that's everything we hope for, of course, um, it, it, it will reduce in, in spreading around and the pace will come down. We don't know that yet. And as a, a big part uh, of our, our claims is also uh, coming from life insurance, um, of course, the number of fatalities is something very much driving um, also our, our claims. And then on the PNC side, um, it's event cancellation, it's contingency. So how long will there be public measures um, to, 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 to fight uh, the virus? And, and to what effect will, be, will, will they affect our business? We don't know that yet. So therefore, we continue to be cautious. Uh, but as I said, so far, under, we have under, a stable balance sheet. We are well capitalized. So we have, it, 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 it's our job to bear these risks, and we're very happy to do that. Absolutely. I understand, Christoph. You know, I, I wonder, though, if we don't see a pickup, assuming there's no second wave pickup, um, do you expect claims to rise? Because what I'm trying to gauge is what's the lag time between, you know, damage and claim in these corona-related issues? Yeah, um, if, if there's not a second wave, and let's, let's assume the best possible scenario. So on the global level, the number of infections just goes down very quickly now. That would be the best possible 
uh, scenario, maybe with vaccination being available. Right. In, in that case, um, we still expect some claims to come because, as you said, the, 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 the pace until we see them realizing these claims is very much different right. from line by line. In event cancellation, it, it's pretty quick. We know it right away. But if you look, for example, at credit yep. insurance, uh, credit insurance is very much closely connected to the global economic development, and there might be a delay, and we might still have claims going forward.